With the weight of Season 3 of Invincible keeping fans on edge after a stellar Season 2, I thought I'd reflect on what we've seen so far, as well as discuss its potential to go down as one of the greatest Western animated shows of all time, as well as a symbol of hope regarding the current climate of superhero media. Hey, how's it going everybody? I hope you're all good. My name is Peter Gargan, and welcome back to another video. This time, I'll be stepping out of my comfort zone from the world of Nintendo and gaming, and we'll be talking about my current favourite TV show in the form of Invincible on Amazon Prime Video, and why I think it's on its way to becoming one of the all-time highly esteemed greats in the animation industry. And while it is true that it may be a bit early to make that statement, considering we've only just finished the second season, I think it's safe to say that if this momentum continues all the way into its conclusion, then it will be in the same ballpark as the likes of Avatar The Last Airbender, Samurai Jack, and Teen Titans all of which are retrospectively held in high regards by audiences and critics as some of the all-time greats in terms of what serialized animation can offer. There is a special emphasis on the word serialized here, because while other animated shows like Spongebob or The Simpsons have also had their fondly remembered golden ages and are cultural icons, each episode in those series are typically self-contained narratives that return to the status quo by the time the next episode begins. But with the aforementioned examples, there is typically an ongoing story arc following on from previous episodes that eventually reaches a conclusion after a number of seasons in. As an example, Avatar sees Aang and his companions travelling the world to master all of the bending elements to put a stop to the Fire Nation's tyranny, which, spoiler alert for an almost two decade old cartoon, eventually gets resolved and brings closure to the story being told. Well, until the follow-up comics and The Legend of Korra came along of course, but you get the idea. Being an adaptation based on the comic book series of the same name that ran from 2003 with a conclusive end in 2018, Invincible will follow the same path after an unconfirmed amount of seasons closely adapts the story into its eventual conclusion. And by the time that happens, I am predicting a legacy of critical acclaim and further interest in future adaptations of Robert Kirkman's other works, or other image comics properties in general, or even a reignited interest in superhero media as a whole. But before I go into a bit of a side tangent, I would like to explain why I've fallen in love with the show itself. My first exposure to Invincible was through a trailer I saw for season 1 leading up to its release while randomly scrolling Facebook one day, and I immediately recognised J.K. Simmons' voice as one of the lead characters, who I'd naturally learned to be the fan favourite Omni-Man. Being one of my all-time favourite actors after loving his performance as J. Jonah Jameson in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy as a kid, his performance as Tenzin, my favourite character in Legend of Korra, as well as being fresh off of watching Whiplash for the first time shortly before I stumbled across the trailer, I was naturally curious, but I didn't have an Amazon Prime subscription at the time and decided to just keep it under my radar for the time being. When it did arrive to the service, I realised I could use the three year student offer since I was in my first year of university at the time, so I thought why not give it a go, and after the notorious ending of that first episode, I was hooked for the remaining seven, and then after that, eagerly anticipated the next season. As of the time of writing this, I've been waiting for the second half of season 2 to drop because they decided to give a long mid-season break for a good few months, which is frustrating, but I guess at the very least it's given me time to get started on the comics, as well as reflect on my thoughts on the show so far, and this video will likely be up by the time the remaining 4 episodes have aired anyway. So where do I begin? I'm not too sure, but I'll try my best to organise my thoughts in a way that is digestible for anyone curious enough to give the series a watch for themselves if they have yet to check it out. Basically, Invincible is an adult animated series that tells the story of 17-year-old Mark Grayson, a typical teenager whose father Nolan is Omni-Man, the most powerful superhero on Earth. Mark learns as a kid that his dad is actually an alien for the planet Filtrum, which Nolan claims to be a benevolent empire that goes around helping less developed planets and providing them with resources that ensure their prosperity. Due to the biological perks of being half Filtrumite, Mark inherits superhuman strength, speed, durability, accelerated healing, and the ability to fly. Determined to follow in his father's footsteps, Mark sets out to be the next rising hero under the optimistic mantle. Bam, ba -ba -bam, ba -ba -bam. Okay, yeah, that joke's a bit overused. Moving on. <laughs> you might be thinking that this is sounding like a pretty generic premise so far. A teenage boy develops superpowers, has fun with them, stops the bad guy, pretty standard stuff. But that's what the first episode wants you to believe, until it completely flips the script towards the end. I don't really want to spoil it for those that haven't seen it, but I might go into more detail on the specifics in a separate video if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. 
So let me know in the comments and subscribe to my channel for more. But for now, all I can say is that the reality that Mark has been led to believe all his life regarding what it means to be a true hero gets put into serious perspective as the series moves forward, and that he must be prepared for absolutely anything as his limits are put to the test while he learns the meaning of fighting for what's right. Naturally, as Mark learns the ins and outs of being a hero, we are also introduced to a diverse range of layered characters who are all pretty much given sufficient screen time to have some interesting story arcs of their own to follow on the side. Some of my favourites include Robot, um, well, a robot, who assumes the role of the leadership of the Guardians of the Globe team that recruits new heroes as the series progresses, while also having secret goals of his own that lead to some rather ethically questionable ramifications. We've also got the recurring villains, the Mother Twins, a pair of hulking science geniuses who constantly bicker about which one is the clone, a dynamic that is very entertaining to see unfold for both comedic and existential reasons. There's also Monster Girl, a young woman similar in concept to the Hulk, only that a human body physically de-ages after every transformation, which she has done so much to the point where she gets mistaken for a prepubescent child by those around her, much to her annoyance. There's plenty more where these examples came from, but these are some that I personally found pretty interesting. But I'm sure most other fans will also point you to ones I didn't mention as their favourites, and that just shows how much variety there is here, and you'll definitely come across at least a few whose stories you'll invest in alongside Mark's struggles. Being in adult animation, Invincible also doesn't hold back on the violent implications of having superpowered beings fighting it out, very much comparable to fellow Amazon series The Boys, which illustrates a similar point. I was initially skeptical of whether I would enjoy the show after seeing some of the gory moments in the trailers, but I do have a higher level of tolerance with blood and guts when it's in animated form compared to live action for some weird reason, so I was ultimately okay with it in the end. Plus, I never really felt like they overdid it, and whenever it did go a bit over the top, it typically served a specific purpose to enhance the narrative, which becomes especially apparent in the last episode of season 1. I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about if you've already seen it. Honestly, that scene absolutely shook me to the core, and continues to leave a lasting impression three years later. In an age of entertainment where superhero movies have tremendously increased in popularity, it can be difficult to stand out. But in a post-endgame landscape where that level of hype is seemingly declined, Invincible serves as a reminder that audiences are not actually tired of the genre, they would rather just see more refreshing stories that also remind us why we fell in love with them in the first place, and Invincible strikes that perfect balance if you ask me. And with the boys serving as a darker deconstruction that explores a more sinister side regarding the relationship between the public perception of heroes and the power dynamics at play behind closed doors, an approach that has also evidently resonated with critics and audiences alike, Invincible also manages to address heavy themes surrounding the consequences of superpowered beings while simultaneously holding onto that core aspect of having these characters being determined to move forward to preserve the greater good in the face of the tragedies they encounter. As much as people like to closely compare both shows due to the surface level similarities present, they both take drastically different approaches to telling a less family friendly story involving superheroes, which has allowed both of them to thrive as two of the most popular Prime Video originals, as they are still distinct enough to coexist as bloodier takes on a genre with a reputation for staying PG for the most part. When it comes to giving Marvel and DC a run for their money, Invincible could be what kickstarts a golden opportunity for Skybound animation. After all, Robert Kirkman has already seen success in having his work adapted to TV with the insanely popular The Walking Dead, which started out as a series of graphic novels, and Image Comics as a publisher has a diverse selection of stories both within and outside the superhero genre to draw from, if they ever decide to go all in on adapting many of their stories that don't just have to be restricted to whatever Kirkman alone has contributed. Even though Invincible is the only Image or Kirkman related thing I'm familiar with, I've done a bit of research to see that they just might have the potential to give Marvel and DC some friendly competition, in terms of throwing their hat at the ring for a new wave of adaptations. There's already other existing examples, such as the TV series Outcast, which I'd never even heard of before I began work on this video, and a confirmed upcoming live action film adaptation of Oblivion Song, which I'm also unfamiliar with. Overall, Invincible has quickly become one of my favourite TV shows of all time in just two seasons. It's reignited my interest in superhero storytelling, serves as a reminder of why animation is my favourite medium of storytelling to begin with, and it has also inspired me to make this video in the first place, as a way of not only expressing something I just really wanted to talk about, but also to branch out from my typical gaming videos on this channel. 
and I hope it paves the way for more diverse topics. Anyway, that just about does it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you would like to see more videos covering Invincible or other non-gaming topics. I've really enjoyed sharing my thoughts, so feel free to add your own thoughts in the comments yourself. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you like what you've seen. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, see you later.